Hey guys, Emmental is a type of Swiss cheese. But honestly, after using the Emmental programming language, I would say that would be better described as an onion. Because it has layers? Sure. Also, it makes me want to cry. Emmental is an esoteric programming language that was created in 2007 by Chris Pressey. In Emmental, programs can modify the very interpreter they're running on. When a program starts running, the metacircular interpreter, which is described as an Emmental interpreter written in Emmental, starts off in the default state, as described in the wiki. But you can define new Emmental instructions and even overwrite the default ones. Though in practice, defining Emmental instructions is basically like defining functions in anything else. Kinda. Anyway, let's take a look at some Emmental code. Emmental has two data structures, a stack and a queue. The stack is the primary place where data lives, and the queue is used for extra storage. The number sign in Emmental pushes a zero onto the stack. The number sign can then be followed by digits, which will pop the top value on the stack, multiply that number by 10, add whatever digit you type, and then it pushes that whole result back onto the stack. This can be done many times to create numbers, such as 65 here. To output something from the stack, you type a period, which will pop and output the top value of the stack as an ASCII character. So this program outputs the letter A. You can also do addition and subtraction on the stack. This program, for example, will print B, since it adds 1 to A. The Hello World program in Emmental looks like this. Hmm. The method of writing text here seems pretty formulaic. Surely this can be automated, can't it? Sure it can. That's why I made this web-based tool here that can generate text outputting in Emmental in just the click of a button. Now let's make something more complicated, such as the Truth Machine program. Truth Machine, designed by SOLangs.org user Keymaker, tests I.O. and looping. First, it accepts one bit of input from the user. If that bit is a zero, the program responds with a zero and halts. If the bit is 1, the truth machine prints 1 indefinitely. Writing this starts off straightforward enough. Getting one character of input in Emmental is represented by the comma. But now we've run into a problem. Emmental has no way to do conditional statements. At all. What? Wait a sec. How would it even be feasible to write a truth machine in this? Well, remember what I said about redefining Emmental instructions? Emmental provides an eval instruction where it will pop the top value off the stack and run it as an Emmental instruction. If we're not redefining anything, if we push 59, the ASCII code for a semicolon, and then run eval, it will run the semicolons instruction as if it were normal code. In Emmental, semicolon pushes a semicolon onto the stack. So that's what this program does. It was very useless, but that's what it did. But you said instructions can be redefined, right? And we can assume that the user already put a 0 or 1 onto the stack, right? Could we maybe redefine 0 and 1 to do truth machine things? And then eval those truth machine things? Yeah, that's exactly what we do. Ooh, can we eval 1 while running 1? Sure you can! This brings us to supplant, which is an Emmental instruction that pops a symbol, an Emmental program terminating with a semicolon, and redefines the symbol to mean that Emmental program. Okay, I'll take it from here. Zero will put 48, the ASCII for zero, on the stack and print it. One will put 49 on the stack, print that, then call one again. Simple, easy, I got this! Okay, now just gotta run it and... Huh? Why isn't this working? You... you know what's going on, don't you? <laughs> Man, this is too funny! The program is supposed to be on the stack, but you wrote it in program space! <laughs> oh. It's not that big a deal. Don't feel bad about it. You just need to Ementalize it! What? In order to properly supplant, these two sets of instructions, which are the correct ones by the way, need to find their way onto the stack, and that means converting them into ASCII codes and pushing those codes onto the stack. The semicolon precedes that, and the symbol to replace, which is also an ASCII code, goes on top. I call this process Ementalization, because the likelihood that it is used in anything else prior to me uploading this video and you guys putting it into your own projects is basically zero. 
Now Supplant works, and therefore so does the Truth Machine. Also, to make ementalization and deementalization easy, I put it in this web-based tool that I made in React. Hey, the code's basically unreadable though. Yes, and? Oh well. Anyway, now on to the final program of this video, the 99 Bottles of Beer program. The nice thing about this 99 Bottles of Beer program is that it works. The not nice thing is that it is quite complicated and is mostly ASCII codes obfuscating the actual logic. That's why I described Emmental as an onion earlier. You're seeing both reasons for that right now. The digits of the number of bottles are the only state we need to keep track of in this program, and they are kept as two separate variables since it's easy to print digits in Emmental, but not easy to print whole numbers. Also, the tenth digit is the deeper one in the stack, since it's modified less than the ones digit. The first thing I did was make an instruction P that, given two digits on the stack, prints them. They're stored in the wrong order for printing, so I used the Q to reverse the digits temporarily, print them, and then reverse them back, leaving the stack the way it was before. Also, when writing this, I realized that in queuing doesn't pop from the stack, and there was no default pop from the stack instruction. So I had to do something with the ones digit to access the tens digit for enqueuing. Luckily, it was pretty easy to make my own pop and do nothing instruction, represented as a pipe, by duplicating the top of the stack, subtracting it to zero, which in ASCII is null, and then running eval on null. By default, every undefined instruction in mmental is a no-op, so this effect is just a pop then no-op. I don't know why this doesn't exist in mmental by default, but who cares, I have it now. Now that the P instruction exists, the next key instruction is D, or decrement. This instruction subtracts one from bottles by subtracting from the ones digit. Obviously, when subtracting from zero, something special needs to happen. So, after decrementing, I eval the result of the decrement plus 200 as an instruction. Most of these will be no-ops, but for 199, it will actually run something. An instruction that decrements one from the tens place and puts a nine in the ones place. So now, we can decrement by any two-digit number. Lastly, we need a loop that can continuously decrement and print. The loop instruction that I made is L. Before decrementing, L is placed onto the empty queue. During decrement, I added a check to see if bottles is 0, 0. If it is, then L is replaced with a no-op character. At the end of the loop, whatever is on the queue is dequeued and run. Usually, it dequeues and runs L again. But if bottles is 0, 0, it stops because something else is on the queue. Now we have it working, but it's not printing any additional text. Printing text, though, is just like the Hello World part, and we've seen it before. So now we have a functional 99 bottles of beer program! Hooray! Anyway, if you want to try out Emmental yourself, there's a link to it in the description, as well as the tool I've made. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time! Huge shout out to all the channel members, including Tyler Zanke.